Hello there. Let us talk about this stuff one last time. Um, because I, I really, really love this. And basic, and I have to confess, even though I love drinking it neat, the, one of the first things I did when it showed up on my doorstep was I started trying to mix cocktails with it. Because it seems to me like, like you could do a lot with a 69% pear brandy. But if you haven't watched the review, it's linked down below. Um, and to some extent, if you could build some good cocktails around this stuff, maybe more people would would be out demanding it, right? Um, so after initial experiments, um, I discovered that this high proof near hazmat pear brandy is actually extremely flexible. Um, it, it just goes with lots of stuff. It's it's. Uh, would you like a gin and pear and tonic? It works. It's, it actually works very beautifully. Um, but I wanted to do something a little bit more idiosyncratic than that. So what did I do? I brought out my uh, very old copy of the Flavor Bible. This is uh, my favorite cookbook in the world. It's not really a cookbook. What it is is basically a list of things and then things that go well with those things. And I opened to the page on pears. It's actually a very long section. And I just start reading stuff that goes well with pears. Uh, first thing, almonds is bolded and uh, uh, all caps. So if you want to play with orgeat, it should work well with this. What else we got? Cinnamon, clove, uh, also similarly emphasized. If you want to make a toddy with this, I think that would actually work well. Um, honey, lemon, orange, uh, vanilla. Um, and I'm, I'm not even talking about the things that are just in, in normal typeface. But the thing that caught my eye when I was looking, looking at this was something in the flavor affinity section, which is basically larger scale combinations. There is an entry here which reads pears plus honey plus rosemary. And that reminded me of a cocktail I tried to make years ago, uh, in which I didn't like very much. It's, it's a cocktail called the hotel doll sauce. Basically the story is I had a couple of extra sprigs of rosemary. And this was a cocktail that started off by muddling rosemary. And I thought that was super cool. Now, um, uh, so the cocktail was basically um, half an ounce of Benedictine, half an ounce of Cointreau, the muddled rosemary, um, and uh, two ounces of uh, blended Irish whiskey. And when I actually made this, I mean, the idea sounded really cool. Um, again, it was just, it, it, it didn't do it for me. Like there was, it basically just wasn't balanced. Uh, it felt like um, there was way too much sweet going on and the, the base, uh, you know, a blended Irish whiskey, you know, God, God help it cannot stand up to, to the amount of, that amount of Benedictine and, and Cointreau. Um, and it's, it, it demanded maybe a little hint of sour in there too. And the big problem was, was for something called hotel doll sauce. And I know, I know the idea. It's like Oscar Wilde in his last days, an Irishman staying in Paris or in France, right? That, that's the theme. But still something that has Alsace in the name should seem a little more Alsatian. Um, anyways, but I did like that initial idea of, of, um, muddling rosemary to start, start off the recipe. So uh, what I started coming up with was a similar cocktail. Oh, and I don't, don't have anything to muddle. I have left my muddler behind. You know what, I'm gonna use this uh, empty sample bottle here. This is the Joseph Cartron, which I never cleaned up. We're gonna use this as our muddler, all right? Um, Cause that's where we're at today. Okay, uh, okay. So I got my rosemary. You, 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 so the original recipe calls for basically a sprig cut in half. Uh, and the first half of the sprig you muddle, and the second, and then you, you know, stir it with ice and you strain it. Um, you know, I don't have my stirrer either. Hold on. Let me use this pen here. This is my stirrer. Uh, anyways, so in the original recipe, uh, you strain everything into a into a coupe glass. And then you use the second half of this sprig as a garnish. And that just seems like a good waste of, a waste of good rosemary to me. So I'm going to take, I'm going to muddle this entire sprig with my, I'm going to move this out of the way for a second, with my Cointreau and my Benedictine. Now I'm going to, for the measurements on this, I'm going to get a little bit um, Baroque. 
because basically if you scale this up to the amount of the two, you know, natural uh, fractions of ounces, uh, you end up with way too much alcohol and that's, that's some, no fun. So um, uh, for the sweet part of this muddling, I'm going to suggest two teaspoons, teaspoons, bar spoons if you like, of Benedictine. This is a, uh, this is the honey part of that uh, flavor combination. Benedictine is very, very honey. It's also slightly herbaceous, uh, which makes it fun in cocktails. It's also pretty unique. Um, and then you're going to fill up the rest of that half ounce with some good old-fashioned Cointreau, which the top's going to roll off. And you just pour the rest of the way. If it'll ever pour, come on. There we go. Not a professional mixologist. Did I mention that? And in it goes in the glass. And then I'm going to add some sour. I'm going to add not too much. I'm going to add literally a teaspoon of lemon juice. You do not want to turn this into a sidecar. Um, not too, too much lemon. This is plenty. Like you just want to, to add a little bit of sour to the halo that's going to be sitting around this, this pear brandy we're going to add in, in a second. And for this, for the, to finish off that half ounce, I'm going to suggest you add two teaspoons of water. Now, this is really only necessary if you're using this 69% monster. Um, and if you don't want to do it, that's fine. You can just wait for your, your ice to melt for a little bit. Uh, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to add some just regular old tap water to this. Incidentally, if you want to um, go a little bit crazy, you can turn this into a tall drink, right? You can into a highball. You can just, you know, find your favorite spritzy th stuff and fill it up once you've made your your basic, uh, you know, cocktail -y component. And in goes the lemon juice and the water. And then I'm going to muddle this with my sample bottle. This is, this is, the nice thing is even if you don't muddle very well, the rosemary will come through. Uh, come through. All right. And now, again, mm. so again, uh, in, the pre in the old recipe, you would be straining this uh, after stirring it into a uh, in a glass but I'm not going to do that because uh, my, my ideal here was to kind of make a, a sort of um, if you like a, a Alsatian Caipirinha of sorts I want little bits of mottled rosemary floating around in this glass so uh, now that the basics are there I'm gonna put some ice in not too much all right and then we're gonna do an ounce and a half of pear brandy. And you will, of course, be adjusting if you do not have the 69% version. But, you know, you, 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 I trust you can, you can pull that off. And back on it goes. And we start a little bit with my um, professional pen stirring device. And that's it. Ooh. Even with, this, with a little bit of water in there, that is strong. Uh, this is something to be sipped over a good half an hour, half an hour at least while you wait for the the ice to kind of um, you know do it do its work chill this down a little bit get comfortable but it is good god god it is good and just a, for, for my money a huge improvement on the original cocktail so uh, what am I gonna call this well in tribute to Joe Sullivan who uh, birthed this into the world on our behalf. I'm going to call this the Jotel Dal Sauce. Jotel Dal Sauce. Ooh. 
perfect little fall drink. Um, anyways, that's this little cocktail -y video all done. I'll put the, uh, the recipe down below. Feel free to not follow it at all and come up with your own version. That's kind of what I, what I expect. Thanks for watching and cheers.